common range for a control valve actuator is 3 to 15 psi. In some applications, such as two valves that cover a wide range of flow, it is necessary for one 3 to 15 psi signal to operate both valves. Valve A should be fully open before valve B opens. This is called split range operation. It is commonly done with positioners. A 3 to 9 psi input to valve A positioner yields a 3 to 15 psi output. A 9 to 15 psi input to valve B positioner yields a 3 to 15 psi output. Manipulation of the zero and span adjustments, and in some cases changing the range spring or cam, will allow most positioners to be set for split range operation. When the positioners are set properly, both valve A and valve B will be closed at 3 psi input. With an input of 9 psi, valve A is fully open and valve B is closed. With an input of 15 psi, both valves are fully open. Another type of positioner operation is to have one valve closing while the other is opening. For this operation, one positioner is reverse acting. A 3 to 15 psi input signal gives a 15 to 3 psi output. For a 3 psi input to the positioners, valve A would be fully closed and valve B would be fully open. When a signal of 15 psi is present, valve A is open and valve B is closed. Due to the flow characteristics of butterfly valves, special care must be taken when calibrating their positioners for certain operations. In this particular service, Two butterfly valves serve as a three-way valve that routes the flow or part of the flow either through or around a heat exchanger. The total flow must remain unchanged. If the flow into the system is 10,000 or 100,000 barrels per day, the operation of the butterfly valves must not restrict the amount of flow. Characteristic cams must be used in the positioners to ensure that valve operation doesn't restrict the flow. A positioner such as the Fisher 3580 must be used since it has characteristic cams. The characteristic cams B and C produce a non-linear relationship between percent input and percent stem travel. Split range positioners and positioners for special services like the ones just described do not have bypasses. If the input was 3 to 15 psi and the output was 9 to 15 psi it is obvious that bypassing the positioner could result in a process upset. Now work exercise four in your workbook. Now let's look at some actual valve positioners. This is the Fisher 3580. Notice the zero adjustment. and the span adjustment. 
This is the bypass valve. This is a cross section of the positioner. There is an input signal restrictor to dampen the input signal. Notice the range spring. The Fisher 3580 range springs are color coded. The cadmium is for a 3 to 15 psi, the green for 5 to 25 psi, and the red for 6 to 30 psi range control valve actuator. The Fisher 3580 can be split ranged with no extra parts required. It can also be changed from direct to indirect with no extra parts required. This is a Mason Elon model 7400 valve positioner. It is a force balance device. The zero adjustment is made with the turnbuckle. The span adjustment is made by turning the pinion. This moves the index left and right on the stroke scale to make the positioner output agree with valve stroke. The Mason Elon 7400 can be split ranged, but you have to have a reverse acting pilot to change the action. This is the bypass. The Mason Elon series 7600 positioner is used with camflex valves. There is only one adjustment for the series 7600 positioner, and that is the zero or turnbuckle adjustment. The 7600 positioner operating principle is nearly the same as the 4600 positioner which will be described in segment 3. The relative position of the feedback parts, the cam and lever, depends on the following. The actuator action, if it's air to open or air to close. The size of the actuator, the positioner mounts differently on different size actuators and the action of the positioner, if it is direct or reverse acting. When changing the action of the positioner, the cam will be switched from hole A to hole B or vice versa. It will also be necessary to change the position of the bearing lever. In every case, the pivot points of the cam and lever should be on opposite sides of the housing. If the positioner is reverse acting, the supply and exhaust connections have to be interchanged. The supply gauge must be removed and replaced with a plug. The cams determine span, characteristic, and range. Now work exercise five in your workbook.